Hi, this is Dean O.V. Um, I hope you are well. I hope life's treating you good and all is fabulous in life. Um, just recently come back from Liverpool International Beatles Week and I'll be doing some little mini videos on that. Please subscribe. Please like because I need I need some love and attention. Yeah, just do it if you don't want to. Don't bother. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is many great things happen in Liverpool uh, at Beatles Week. If you haven't been, um, I recommend going. Many people go every year um, and you catch up with many people, many friends, many new people that you only see possibly once a year have travelled from around the globe to all head to Liverpool to congregate and it's great great fun as well as seeing lots of bands, guest speakers and everything. I'll speak about that more. The reason I'm um, doing this little video today please like and subscribe, is, um, please, no, I'm not going to do it anymore, um, is early in the morning, one morning in Liverpool, I was sitting having some drinks in the Adelphi Hotel, and I was chatting to somebody who goes there every year from Brazil. Now, many people go there from all around the world, and then there's always a large contingent of Americans and Brazilians. Other countries are available. But I was talking to this man, and what we were talking about was this. So that's the Paul McCartney Eyes of the Storm exhibition coming on in um london nearly said liverpool then that's um open the 28th of june and it finishes on the 1st of october so if you haven't been you've only got a few weeks to get there so we were talking about that and this led on to something else and this this is my fascinating unique story well, i think it's quite fascinating now in the summer um I, i've got a big beatles collection and sometimes i've got duplicates of things so sometimes i sell them thinking i don't need to do i so in the summer I thought I'm going to have a clear out, get rid of some of my duplicates. And what I put up for sale was this. Love Me Do, The Beatles Progress by Michael Bourne. Now, this is a very, very important book. This is the first paperback um, book on the Beatles that was issued. This came out in 1964. Um, Michael Bourne, he um, was born in New York City. Um, he travelled the world as a cabin boy and ended up in London in the 1960s. And he became an assistant to Stanley Kubrick who was in the UK, who was doing Lolita and Dr. Strangelove. Um, he's, Michael Bourne was a journalist at the Sunday Times and the Observer. And he was interested in the Beatles. So in 1963, he contacted Mr. Brian Epstein and said, I'd like to do a book on the Fab Four. So what did Brian do? Good old Brian. He said, come on in. I'm going to try and do a Brian Epstein impersonation. Yes, we'd like to have you on board. Come on, follow the boys didn't sound anything like Brian Epstein. So basically, Michael Bourne, he went around with the boys. He was there at the Royal Variety performance and followed them on their British tour through late 63, when it really was the beginning of Beatlemania. And this is an incredible um, behind the scenes book. Uh, and it's almost no holds barred. I don't know what was kept out of it. There's photographs inside. And um, I said, Michael Bourne, love me do the Beatles progress that came out in 1964. Rolling Stone magazine called this the number one Beatles book. And John Lennon, when he was speaking to, was it Jan Weber? Jan Wenner from Rolling Stone said, this was the best Beatles book and it was better than Hunter Davis because it told the truth and showed that the Beatles really were barstools. That's barstools, not the other words. So basically, it seems like there's no holds barred. The Beatles are quite aggressive in this and say things that... Um, Brian Epstein, I'm, I'm surprised he allows some of the things. It's not shocking or rever or full of revelations, excuse me. It just it tells the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Well, most of the truth. So I recommend getting this. Love Me Do, The Beatles' Progress, 90, that came out in 1964. It was um, reissued, I believe it was in 2015, whatever. Yeah, it was reissued. Um, so I recommend getting this book, reading it, and find out what it was like grips of Beatlemania towards the end of 1963 and in America in 1964. Stunning, stunning book. So Dino, why are you talking about this book? Well, here's the reason. So I sold this, let me have a look at the date, I sold this book um, May of this year. So nothing wrong with selling a book, is it, till you write the label. So I'm writing the label to who to if it's to, and it's like, hang on, that's MPL, that's Soho Square. That's London. That's Paul McCartney's company. Paul McCartney's name was not on the envelope for me to send it to. It was, an, I presume, an MPL employee. Now, I couldn't understand why would they buy Love Me Do, the Beatles Progress book, the original not from 1964, not the reissue. 
why would they buy it? Is, is Paul cataloging um, books? Is he getting books that are original ones and important ones that are um, historical documents of his life? And I did not know why. Anyway, forgot about it like you do. By the way, I did sell another Beatles book to a very famous uh, Beatles director recently. And I wondered why he bought that, but I think I know the answer to that now. But I shall explain that more on another video. So um, this book was sold to MPL in May and I had no idea. So it was early in the morning. I was speaking to Eduardo from Brazil, talking about things and talking about um, the Eyes of the, the Storm exhibition in London, National Portrait Gallery. There's a bag from it, which you may be aware. And basically, um, Paul's, Paul and Linda's archivist found this reel of film or photographs that were missing and Paul hadn't seen them since the 60s and he published them. and it ties in with this book from around uh, middle to late 63 to early 64 so Eduardo goes to me I'm going to do an awful Brazilian accent he goes hey my friend do you know that's an awful accent it sounds more Italian doesn't it he says I know why MPL buy your book from you and he went through his photos because he came over from Brazil and had been to the National Portrait Gallery to see Eyes of the Storm plug plug and he said i know why mpl bought your love me do the beatles progress book by michael Bourne." i said tell me eduardo my brazilian friend why they buy it and he showed me mpl bought this book from me the original 1964 paperback to put in the exhibition so he showed me the photo and in a glass cabinet you've got my book well i don't own it anymore mpl do and so they purchased it from me can you imagine the feeling i got i know it's sad isn't it? i'm thinking a book that I had in my possession is now part of the Paul McCartney exhibition in London. It's a great thing for me, a great feeling um, to know that everyone that's filtered through and looked at that book, it was in my possession. I know it's sad, but I think it's a touching, nice little story that in a mini school part of way, little way, part of me is in the um, National Portrait Gallery, Gallery Gallery exhibition. This one I've got is another 1964 one. It's not for sale because I want to keep this. And what I love about this, um, people used to write in the books, didn't they? So in here, if you can see, somebody's written in there who who owned it, and the name is D M O N F five S C H. And I'm guessing they were in year five at school, and it's got the date in it, November the twenty second, 1964. I love it when you've got little notes in books. Sometimes I've had original books and it's got in the back of things like I love George or I love Ringo or whoever and people's names and addresses. So it's fascinating. So, yeah, that was my story. MPL bought this book from me in May and I didn't know why. Um, I thought, as I said, maybe Paul's buying some old original books for whatever reason or somebody's doing research. And then in Liverpool, it could only happen in Liverpool, couldn't it? I get told by a man from Brazil, like you do, that my book that was purchased is in the exhibition in London. It pleases my heart. Thank you for watching this. Um, please subscribe. Please thumbs up or thumbs down if you think I'm boring or rubbish. I prefer the, the thumbs up. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Tell everybody to watch these and push me up. That's it. Higher up there. <laughs> so more people can get to see my videos. Because the more people that watch, the more I will do. Now, as I said, I did say in the video as well that um, somebody last year also bought a book from me. Uh, I don't want to say that person's name because you will all know that director's name, but it's very, very important in the Beatles story and history of the last few years. And I couldn't understand why he bought this book from me. Like, I couldn't understand why MPL bought that book for me. So the book that was bought for me by this very famous director, whose name you all know, it makes sense what I got told in Liverpool why this other person brought the book. And it's possibly a clue as to what the next Beatles video, as in um, visual um, release, is going to incorporate. Thank you for watching this. My name is Dino V. I hope you enjoyed it. And as I say, it's just my little silly story. I love me do the Beatles progress. And Paul McCartney, Eyes of a Storm exhibition. National Portrait Gallery in London. Go and see it. It's only on for another few weeks. Um, I, maybe it will tour the world. It can make sense it to go to New York because everything ends up in New York, doesn't it? What about Hamburg? Um, so Michael Bourne that wrote this, um, all credit to this chap, he's born in New York City in 1936 and pa sadly passed away in 1997. So many great people are born in New York, but not me. Thanks for watching. Take care. Subscribe, like, and I'll catch you again. This is Dean O.V. saying good night is all. 
you've got lucky socks. <laughs>